Hey, this is Sasha, and today what I'm going to do is share with you the six things you can learn from tennis as a trader. I'm going to start right now. So let's get started with lesson number one, and that is mindset is just as important as the physical. So if you've played any sport out there, you know that, hey, physique or physical presence is important. Just the way that you're working your body, the way that you uh, kick a soccer ball, the way that you go ahead and swing your tennis racket is very important but you also need the second part and that is the inner game that's the mindset that's the mentality that you need to be able to have a successful match in tennis you have points you have games you have sets and you have a match and you're going to get a lot of these scenarios and situations that are completely different and you have to be able to work against your opponent to be able to have a successful match to be able to have a successful point to be able to have a successful game you got to be able to handle the opposition. Sometimes they're hitting short balls, sometimes it's long balls, and you need to outthink your opponent. If you're constantly hitting to the baseline, then all of a sudden you go ahead and do a quick little drop shot where the ball just goes a little bit over the net and forces them to run and double bounce. All of a sudden you win that point. So when you think about this, it's not just enough to have the physical part of the game. You also have to be able to have the mental part to outthink your opponent. In trading, it's no different. You might think, hey, trading is all mental, but it's also part physical. You have to have both. It's the inner game, the outer game. You gotta have both to be able to make things work, right? So if you look at it and you say, hey, I'm a trader, but my health is all bad. I'm smoking you know, outside to get a little break, you know, and you're not sleeping very well. You need both. You gotta have the mental game as a trader. And you got to have the physical part where you're sleeping right, you're eating right. So that way your brain and body can both operate seamlessly. So it's very important. So looking at lesson number two, let's take a look at it. Lesson number two states that at times your judgment is wrong. Okay. When you look at tennis, sometimes your estimation is wrong. Sometimes you think that ball is going to go really, really deep and all of a sudden, Boom, it's a drop shot. Boom, it's short. You gotta run up to the net really quickly. Or the opposite. Sometimes you think it's gonna go right, but it ends up going left. So your judgment sometimes is wrong. And when you're trading, sometimes you think, hey, that stock's gonna go up another 20 points. All of a sudden it only goes up five. Or maybe it actually pulls back and goes the other direction. This happens all the time in our lives. Sometimes we think one thing and another thing happens. So you need to be prepared that what if you're wrong? What if your judgment is wrong? And you're always thinking this as a trader, as you put on trades, as you're watching your positions. You have to be able to understand that, hey, sometimes you could be wrong, and what are you going to do in that situation? Let's look at lesson number three. Okay, lesson number three is we fail often. Or in other case, if you're playing tennis, you're going to be failing a lot in tennis. Just naturally, the way that the game is set up is that you have points with points you have games with games you have sets and then sets turn into matches so because you're playing a ton of points throughout the match uh, you're going to be failing often you're going to hit a ball outside the scope of the court you're going to you know hit the ball in the net you're going to maybe whiff and not even hit the ball so all of a sudden you're failing quite a bit and it's just the nature of the game. But that doesn't mean you can't win the match. It doesn't mean you can't win the tournament just because you have a lot of failures throughout all of this tournament that you have going on. Instead, what you need to recognize is that all these failures lead up to moving forward to be able to be successful, to be able to get the outcome. With trading, it's no different. You might have, let's say, 500 failed trades throughout your year. But out of that, you might have 150 that are very successful, but they're so successful that those little micro fails are not a big deal. So that's really what it comes down to is it's a numbers game. How do you stand to win from the game of trading? How do you stand to become profitable? Is it that you have a lot of micro small losses and tons of huge, huge wins or just a handful of huge wins to be able to make up those micro losses? Or do you have maybe just a handful of losses and just a ton of tiny, tiny wins? So failing often is going to happen. You're going to fail at trading. But the question is, is how do you win 
at the overall bigger picture for what's your goal for your retirement for making money on the side as long as you're ahead in the end maybe it's month after month maybe you're looking at things in the monthly maybe you're looking at things on the quarterly maybe you're looking at things at the yearly you might not win day to day you might not have winning trading days but on a month to month or a quarter to quarter or an annual basis you might still be fine and be successful let's look at lesson number four and lesson number four states that you are responsible for the outcome a lot of people like to blame other people or other things it's just human nature to push things aside that we don't want to take responsibilities if we're playing tennis hey oh man the weather was crummy it was really windy i had a really hard time with that match uh, you know, they were just better than me. So all these things are, of course, excuses and saying, hey, maybe you're just not good enough. Maybe you're not ready yet. But taking responsibility saying, hey, I need to work on my running. Maybe you're a slow runner. I need to work on my swings. Maybe your, uh, you know, stroke is not good. Maybe your drop shots are not good. Maybe your serve is not good. Those little things you got to work on and get better at. So taking that responsibility rather than pushing things aside, saying, hey, well, the weather was not ideal for me. I really hated to play in those kinds of conditions. It was really windy, so there's a lot of things that got into my eyes. So again, I couldn't play. But taking responsibility is important as a trader. You have to take responsibility for the outcome. Hey, I created a losing trade. I created a losing position. That's kind of a bad situation. But if you take responsibility, at least you know what you can improve on in the future it allows you to step up and become better in the future it allows you to work at things but brushing things aside is not taking responsibility it's kind of like the alcoholics uh, when they say hey the first step is really you got to admit you got to admit the alcoholism you have to admit the drug use you know all those things and then you can go ahead and make those changes happen so responsibility is key let's look at lesson number five and that is don't quit when you are down and in tennis it happened quite a lot with me when you're actually just down sometimes you're down on the set sometimes you're down on the game where hey you're losing a little bit you're behind but it doesn't mean you've lost the match it doesn't mean you've lost the tournament sometimes you're not ahead and you gotta scrape yourself out of that hole to become successful to win the match to win the tournament you have to make it work so point after point you go take it one point at a time or if you need to break it down you take it one swing one stroke one ball at a time and then you get out of it and then you become more successful you win maybe the the game then you win maybe the set then you win maybe the the match and you win maybe the tournament you know a little bit at a time and you keep moving yourself forward well here i mean imagine if you quit right away if you're down a couple points hey you know michael jordan missed a shot or two and then all of a sudden he's ah i'm throwing in the towel i'm not going to deal with this basketball stuff anymore why am i going to bother i missed a couple shots so instead hey don't quit when you are down as a trader look if you have a few losing trades in a week well it's gonna happen what you need to do is step up to the plate and say hey all of a sudden I'm gonna make this change I'm gonna keep pushing forward maybe you trade a little less maybe you trade a little lighter maybe you'd be a little more cautious with your strokes as you're swinging or you're uh, doing a serve but don't quit keep moving forward keep pushing yourself to rise up to the occasion a little bit at a time and eventually you scrape out of that little hole or you just continue to improve you just continue to get a little better a little bit better a few inches a few inches more and you got a few dollars a couple more dollars a couple more dollars and that continues to accelerate ramp up your account you'll become more confident and then you could trade larger if you want or if not hey just go enjoy your life then somewhere else once you've accumulated the amount of funds you want from trading but don't quit if you are just down a little bit okay now next step and next lesson and that is keep swinging and training okay one of the most important things i found and learned from uh, just overall doing anything in life and that is to just keep working and educating yourself one of the reasons why i do these videos is so that i keep refreshing my mind so i keep uh, training myself personally at some of the things maybe that i lack in tennis look at the pros they don't just go out and play tournaments all the time they also train sometimes it's training mentally sometimes it's training physically sometimes it's training with another trainer sometimes it's lifting weights 
whatever the case is, they're still training and they continue to work and grow at their craft, at what they do. So you as a trader, continue to evolve your education. Look, hey, if you just enjoyed swing trading and that's all you wanna do and that's where you wanna stay and you're profitable at it, that's fine, but there's nothing wrong with, hey, maybe I'll spend two hours this month to maybe learn a little bit more about the mental game, how I can be a little more calm while I'm trading. That'll just help you personally. Maybe it won't help you with profits as much because maybe you're not doing anything new or different, but maybe at least internally, then you'll feel better while you're trading. So that'll help out in your personal life. Um, maybe you'll go ahead and spend, let's say, 10 hours this year learning about options. If you've never learned or took the time to learn about options and you're only a day trader or a swing trader or a Forex trader, and now you say, hey, well, I want to learn a little more about options. So you spend maybe 10 hours this year and say, hey, I'm going to take a little bit of time to just at least learn and understand about it. So that way, hey, maybe I could use this in the future. So just like in tennis, you're constantly learning, evolving, and growing, just like a human being, constantly learning from new situations, from new things that come into your life and new things that happen. So I hope this makes sense from these six points and six lessons to, for you to continue to take your game, your trading game, to the next stage and improving and getting you better. All right, so thank you so much for joining me in this week's episode and this week's video. Hope you found it helpful and insightful. And if you did, be sure to subscribe on YouTube or of course, get on the newsletter list and that way you get news and announcements as I release new videos. Thanks again and remember, do what you love, contribute to other people, but most importantly, live life abundantly. I'll see you next time.